Welcome back to the Myth and Death playthrough. In the last mission, Flight from Covenant, the Legion escaped with the Total Codex from the Watcher and his undead horde in Covenant through a secret passage that Moriok had revealed to them. About a month and a half has passed since the last journal entry. Friday, November 7th, the Plain of Scales. We were two days in that tunnel out of Covenant, the Watcher crossing above us every few hours, shaking the ground in his fury, and twice nearly burying us alive. Sometime on the second day, the tremors grew less distinct, and we were relieved to find nothing but rats and mosquitoes waiting for us when we reached Shoal. Not wishing to return west, we headed down the coast toward the old city of Scales, where we met Maildun's southern garrison and turned over the Codex. We learn there that by coincidence, the combined armies of the North are only four days behind us, heading for the mountains to stop the Deceiver, another of the Fallen Lords, from crossing the Cloud Spine before winter. But we can't wait for them. There is a world knot west of the Cloud Spine, and the Head insists that the enemy has learned to travel through the knots. If we don't destroy this portal, we might hold the mountains only to be outflanked by forces emerging from the knot behind us. Eight Dwarven Irregulars and every man in scales from the Legion have volunteered for the mission. Reading between the lines in the journal, it seems that the Dark has undead wandering all around Covenant, trying to find the Legion. I wonder how long it would have taken the Watcher to realize that the Legion had taken the Total Codex. The Watcher and Soulblighter probably didn't even think that the Legion knew what the Total Codex was. Remember that the only reason they knew about it is because the head told them. Scales is located in the Plain of Scales, which is a lowland that spans from the Tobin River to the Cloud Spine. The Total Codex was handed to Maeldun at Scales. Maeldun is one of the Nine Avatara. The Myth the Fallen Lord's Warrior flavor text says this about Maeldun. Maeldun's only words are returning exhausted to tear from a long campaign of the east to find half the city burning after a raid by pirates from Leash were show me the way to Leash. This tells us that Maldon was heavily involved in the war prior to Myth the Fallen Lords. There really isn't anything else in the game about pirates or Leash, so I really can't expand on that. There are some speculations out there, but nothing solid. The Light is trying to stop the Deceiver from crossing the Cloud Spine because neither the Light nor the Dark can cross the Cloud Spine during the winter. This provides a nice barrier of protection and will allow the Light some time to deal with enemies that remain west of the Cloud Spine. The Head tells the Legion that there is a World Knot in the Plane of Scales and that the Dark has learned to use them. There really is no evidence in the game to say otherwise, and there really is no reason for the head to be lying about it. There are two images on the disc for this submission that do not appear in the game. The first one is a bit harder to decipher, but I tend to think it shows Maldon on the left and one of the Furbolg in the Legion on the right. The reason I think this is because it looks like someone who is distinguished, and the only person in the journal that fits it is Maldon. The second image shows some thrall appearing in the World Knot. Seems the head was right about the undead knowing how to use the World Knot. Only this World Knot is a lot more compact than the World Knots in the game. Hopefully those undead aren't claustrophobic. For new units in this mission we got the Berserk. The Berserk draw heavy inspiration from the movie Braveheart. If you haven't watched this movie before, stop my stream right now and come back when you have seen it. Trust me, you will thank me later. The Berserks are from the north and wield giant claymores. They forgo conventional armor for speed and can chop enemies up so quick that they can hardly have time to attack back. The Berserk are very aggressive units and the unit description in Myth the Fallen Lord says this. A Berserk at the Stare of Grief, having been told that the hosts of the Solus were so many that their spears would hide the sun is said to have replied, then we shall fight them in the shade. Their Myth 2 Soulblighter unit description tells of their skill in combat. Though Guayan and his brothers all died, they had succeeded in breaking the monument of the Gull's Charge. 
each scattering corpses until a step could not be taken without treading on one. The Myth 3 The Wolf Age Manual tells us that the Berserks are from the Twelve Duns and from Gower. Myth the Fallen Lords doesn't say much, if anything, about Gower. The Wolf Age Manual also tells us that only the strongest survive the harsh winters in the Twelve Duns and Gower. In summary, the Berserks are one of the coolest units in the game. Time for the mission. Find the World Knot and destroy one of its four pylons with Dwarven Satchel Charges. You'll need six or seven. Well, actually, you'll need about three or four, but that's besides the point. I'll show you. I'll show you, you that fools. when I get there. Where do you think you're going? We're going yes. to the shrine to pray for help. Then you waste your time. The gods aren't listening. So, when we start this mission, we gotta. We want to go to the rightish, just like this little hill where these villagers are going. We go a little bit to the right, and then we'll go. We want we want to go to the right because there'll be like on this road this group of thrall thrall and soulless coming down. So we don't want to um, get them attacking us yeah. before we get onto this hill because this hill is a nice defensive position. There's this little statue here. I'm not sure exactly what it says, but the community really didn't know what it was either from what I've read. And the kind of, it shows up again in Myth 2, but what it ended up being was a reference to Frankenstein, the computer god, um, which was like a internet kind of, I don't know. He was like a crazy dude. He's schizophrenic. But anyways, we'll we'll talk about that more in Myth 2 cuz really in Myth 2 when you see it again was when people finally realized what it was. All these villagers in the way. Let's stop these. Make a hole. Get out of the way. I want to get rid of these archers. So let's uh, get these three to shoot him and these guys. And we'll take out that solace there. There we go. Let's just hack him to pieces. Okay. Okay, so you know something funny? <laughs> they talk about praying, but look, they put their back to this kind of stone. <laughs> Normally you pray, you know, facing something, but they, they, they're odd Damn. ones, you know. Run away! Run away! And of course they just get in the way. Okay. Ah, run for it. Yeah, they're kind of idiots. So, if you play this mission in um, Save us. on Save Myth the Fallen us. Lords, you realize that the AI acts a little differently. There's like this group of goals right here that will come and attack the villagers, right? And normally they'll come in, they'll like, they'll kill them all on the hill. But in, in, if you played an original on Myth of Fallen Lords, they'll probably come, but in Myth of Fallen Levels, they tend to not come right away. So they'll be up here. Wait, let me show you. I'm moving. If I come up here, Let's go. you know, there they are. They're, they're just hanging out there, you know, just chilling. Who knows where these villagers are going? But anyways, so they're gonna, they're gonna come slaughter the villagers, but because we're on the hill, the AI like doesn't want them to move, and I think this only works really in um, Myth of Fallen levels. So if we take our you know doors and them off the hill, then they'll start moving. So that's how they're programmed in the Fallen levels. Let's see, watch. Uh, they might not move because the villagers aren't there. I haven't tried that out. Ready. 
Yeah, they must not. They must not be moving because the villagers aren't there. Let's see if I start attacking them. Because they'll mess with us later. Let's go. I'm moving. Yeah. Yeah, now they're all attacking our berserkers. So yeah. normally, if the villagers are on the hill and you come down, like they'll start yeah. attacking, but. I got them. There we go, we get rid of them all. The berserks are a little bit faster than the ghouls. Get them! Anyways, I'll chase them down. So, next. Composition our troops. Oh, come on, get them. You are faster, right? <laughs> Maybe they're not faster. Maybe I'm crazy. So then there's all these goals over here too. We'll just let them run around. That's right. He'll eventually come out. So let's get yeah. these goals. So these goals will um, basically there's this opening. Like you can't walk on this ice patch, but the goals can for some reason. Maybe they're lighter on their feet or something. I don't know. They kind of like run on the paws. But these these Solus and Goals protecting. I mean Solus and Thrall protecting this kind of crossing right here. You can cross where the ice is broken. Which, I don't know. I would probably rather in real life cross right here. And if it breaks, it breaks. But, you know, whatever. Maybe it's more shallow. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But... <laughs> It must it must be more shallow there. So if you these goals over here, right? Once we aggro them, they'll run over here and they'll kind of sit around here. So we're just gonna and they they'll run across this kind of like ice ice patch here. So we're gonna position our dwarves and our archers so that they can't go where they're pro yeah. they're programming I'm wants moving. them to go. Because we don't want to deal with them later. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm we might have to cross. There's also this waterfall over here that you can cross. It's kind of a secret, I guess. I don't know. So you see, now they're moving. They're going to move right into our doors and archers. They won't approach all the way because they... They'll just kind of sit in here and the archers can keep hitting them. But they want to go through here, but they, they really can't. Yeah, we'll just let them die. gotta love the programming like I w I'd rather they just rush you know somebody but because they're all you know pansies you know there we go okay that's that enough that <laughs> okay so next um there's still like gold running around yeah so most of these Sol Solus and Thrall will run away if we come close, but there is one group in here that will rush us, so we could even either fight them now or we could fight them later. We'll just we'll just do it later. But if you want to fight them right away, we could like defend on the hill, go aggro them with your archers, and then eventually they'll they'll start rush. There'll be one group that rushes you. You can take them out there. But we'll deal with them later, because it'll be more fun. I mean, and typically when you have this many dwarves, it's better to spread them out more. You know, because you risk them, like, blowing themselves up. <laughs> but, you know, eh, it's a heck with precautions. If I get this many dwarves, I'm going to play with them, you know what I mean? I'm going to have fun with it. I'm not going to... 
If I gotta reload, I gotta reload, you know, whatever. I'm moving. He's just kind of chilling over there, that goal. He, d he doesn't want to engage because he'll die. So he's looking for an opportunity to attack. So there's another crossing up here into this kind of area up here, which is where the world knot is that we need to destroy. Let's go. Um, but there's some thrall here that are going to attack us. So we got our doors already. I'm moving. Here they come. And we can watch our yeah. doors blow to smithereens. No big deal. I'm worried about this nade that didn't blow up over here. Yes. Okay. All right. So now there's these solus. These solus are. Their AI is really dumb. So like, if we shoot them, they won't like move as a unit or anything. And so, you can kind of just pick them off. Sir? Nothing much to it. Now this next group, yes. this next line, those solos are smarter. They'll run away and, you know, do other things like that, so... Got him. Okay, they're, they're rushing me. So I'm gonna run away. I got another plan for them. Come on, stop charging me. I'm moving. Normally they don't charge you very far. Most likely they won't even charge you like that, but sometimes they do. But I got a nice little trick I want to show off, a plan I came up for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill these solas with satchel chargers. You got to make sure you know we have enough left to destroy the world knot, which, you know, in the bro, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, right now they're all crooked, you know what I mean? So we're gonna kinda shoot them a few times and make them face right. Make them run away. Okay, let's run back. Yeah. Okay. So now, mm, that's the way they're gonna line up. I don't believe that. Make him run a little bit. Okay, now come back. I'm moving. Okay, that that looks more right. Okay, so I'm gonna mark where they line up. So they're gonna line up there. So I'm gonna put some arrows on the ground so I can remember that spot. And then they're gonna line up here. So I'll put some arrows on the ground there. Stand clear. Now we kind of have an idea of where the line is. Okay, so now what we can do is we can make them, we can push them back. We can scare them away with our archers. But not too fast, because they might turn around and start shooting us if we go too fast. They got the, they got the hill advantage, so they can shoot much farther than usual. Yes! Come on. There we go. We got rid of that annoying goal. <laughs> He's just trying to give us a hard time, huh? Okay. So let's keep pushing these souls back. Okay. Alright. I 
keep thinking, I was playing Myth of Fallen, Fallen Lords, and I keep forgetting that I can just guess you with a right click, because that doesn't exist in Myth the Fallen Lords. It was added in Myth 2, so. What now? Okay, so what we're gonna do is there's a little chick. So this line of satchels, we're gonna blow this up and kill them all. But one thing we can do uh, let's, here. is we can kind of lay out an outline of grenades using this water. So basically, you know, we're going to create a line back here so we can blow them up from afar. And this kind of creates, you know, a way to save satchels. Oops. Oops! <laughs> That's why I saved it here, because I thought that might happen. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, you just kind of get the idea. Because... I'm I'm getting getting mixed up on where the edge of the water is, cause like, anyways, this is like, as long as they throw it in the water, you know what I mean. It won't explode, cause the water when it goes in the water, it will put it out, and then when it it'll bounce out of the water. But anyways, yeah, move here, move we just gotta make sure we have you know three satchels left. Okay. Let's place just a couple more. So we got okay. one with him, two with him, three. Yeah, we have quite a few. We have plenty left. Okay, now, now this is <laughs> this is so cheesy. Okay, they're gonna come back. Now yeah, they're lining up pretty well on the satchels. The ones on the right could be a little better. So let's let's test this out. Let's see how this goes. Move here, move there. We definitely want to see him. Let's bring up our archers so we can see. Okay, we can see where they are. Let's let's see how this works. <laughs> oh, it's it's glorious. I move it. That's a lot of fun. So that's what all that set up because because those solus are pain. So we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna kill them. We're not gonna. We're not even gonna deal with them. Okay, that solus is dead. Okay, so now basically, um, well, there's two ways we could do this. There's the cheese way that only, and I call it cheese because it only works in this one. So normally, you need um, <laughs> normally to blow up these world knots, you need satchel charges. That's the way it is in Myth of Fallen Lords. But in the broken, or in the the in the this plugin, you don't. So let's let's get our doors set up right. And we can blow it up just with grenades. See, look. And now the enemies that spawn in and stuff. We already beat the mid level. <laughs> and it comes back somehow and spawns them in. You know, that's that's basically what happens. You know, that you can't do that in the Fallen Lords. You can only do it in the Fallen Levels. Because, you know, it's just the difference between the two games. So, normally what... You know, you're going to have to fight all those guys that come out because you're not going to be able to get your dwarves all up there to place satchels and try to blow it up, you know what I mean? Because then you'll start getting all these Thrall and Solus attacking you. So what we're going to do instead, you know, so we're playing it, you know, legit and not some glitchy way. 
come all the way over here. Because, like, when we activate this, everybody's going to start coming and attacking us, right? So we're going to use this kind of hill as defense. And yeah. we're going to send our go. Berserk to, um... Let's go. That was a waste, but whatever. Let's go. Let's go. So these guys should yeah. be able to activate Let's the world knot. I'm moving. I'm moving. Let's there we go. go. I'm moving. Here comes a way. Let's go. Over here. I'm moving. So the next group yeah. comes in. Okay. Let's get our berserks running away. So they're all gonna start charging our units. There's just gonna be these guys. There's some other guys over here that are gonna charge us and stuff. Like here comes the Solus. So we'll take care of them. This hill is amazing. For some reason, if you're over here and you click down, they want to come down here instead of going around. These solace are a pain. They're really the only thing that could possibly hurt me. Basically, you know, trying to focus down these solas. But the hill is nice, you know, with all these dwarves, because the grenades can't really bounce back up. I'm moving. I'm moving. These guys are still running back. Still some more coming. There's so many of them. We're gonna have so many kills. Let's go get him. That was mine. Got him. Yeah. Okay, let's uh Why don't you right actually you focus down him. These two doors will go take care of the souls. There we go. Okay, so where's our berserks at? They're still they still haven't made it back here. A lot of a lot of enemies have died in a short amount of time. Ready, alright. That was mine. It's a fun way to get a lot of kills. Kill these few remaining thrall. That was mine. Let's pick up this thrall over here. He's wandering aimlessly. He's lost. Got his thrall friends. Yes. Then we take out this lonely soulless. I'm moving. He must have got stuck on a tree or something. Okay, so there's that. We pretty much beat the mission now. <laughs> Lots of death and destruction. So there's still actually some units here. I'm not going to bother with these guys. They're the... Well, I could take them out. They're pretty much... 
You know, just the group that is stuck defending this ridge that won't attack you. Stand clear. You might as well deal with them. Ready. All right. Hey. Yeah. Well. You know, not like that. I probably shouldn't have been fast forwarding. Well, anyways, let's let's just forget about them. We don't we don't need a. It's gonna be faster just to run this way. We killed enough for today. We'll spare a few lives. So you can see after the explosion, you can see like the exact outskirts of you know what will explode and what won't. If the grenade lands there, what what will put it out and what won't. Yeah. So these few units won't move, so we can take them out real quick. Doctors can shoot farther than Solus, so he just sits there. Okay, so if you um take a dwarf yeah. with three satchel Loser. charges, Loser. it might not work every time. I think you can actually get closer to them. Yeah, I think you can actually get closer to them than in Mythifall and Lords. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think, I think you, well, yeah, I think you can step a little bit closer to these roll nods. The, yeah, anyways. The collision detection is closer. So if you place three right there, okay. it should blow it up. You know, in Myth of Fallen Lords, yeah. it's not a guarantee, but usually it works. But we can put down a couple more for safety. You know, actually, we don't even need those for, you know, yeah. this one. But we have extra ones, so we'll just put them down. So it's probably, I found, I feel like it's better just to place them all in a clump than, you know, going around it. You know, which is not what you would typically think, but you know, since we have all these satchels, we're gonna place them. Like I said, if you're playing, you know, Myth the Fallen Lords, if you're playing Myth the Fallen Levels, you don't even need them, and it's kind of sad that they okay. goofed that up. Or to, they just probably didn't think about it when they made this. I don't know what they were thinking, but anyways. But if you're playing Myth the Fallen Levels, you need like three right here and all in a pile. So, that's it. So, Dwarves got almost one shy of 100. Archers got 46. And we got a few for our Berserks, so that's nice. This guy already has 100 kills. 72. Our Dwarf from the first mission has 100. That's pretty nice. So, anyways. The windscreen shows a Dwarf holding up some sort of symbol. This is likely part of the symbol that appears in the world knot that was destroyed. If you lose the mission, you see the remnants of an explosion and dwarf body parts scattered across the ground. Yep, that looks about right. Could the dwarves please stop blowing yourselves up? Jeez. Jay Bringer, who was the bungee level designer for this mission, said this. This was one of the levels I had the most fun with. Something that had way too much time spent on it was the vignette of the gold slaughtering villagers on the hill near the shrine. It's a nice touch though if you go in for that sort of thing. For easter eggs in this mission, if you kill one of the villagers, the villagers will get very friendly with your doors. It might seem like harmless fun until one of your units dies because of the grenade bouncing off of them. The sound file at the beginning of the mission also appears again in a later mission called Ambush a Devil's Outlook. I'll show you this when we get there. That is it for this mission. Stop by next time for Bagrada.